What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It is your boy, Niner Sickness, with the Niner Sickness Report. What's up, Josie? Martinez, Burkhead, how you doing? Welcome to the show, Eduardo Martinez. What's going on, peeps? Welcome to the show. As you saw in the title, um, I need your guys' help. We'll talk a little bit of football. But I wanted to get an idea of how my microphone sounds. I'm trying a different mic. Uh, let me show you guys real quick. I'm trying a different mic uh, that I use that I normally use. So I wanted to kind of get an idea of what your thoughts are on the mic. Uh, does it sound good? Is it am I coming clear? Uh, do I sound far away? Uh, do you guys hear my birds in the background? Um, how's the background noise? Are you guys, I have birds, I have conyards, are they chirping away, can you get hear the birds? I kind of want to do a test run, so I appreciate you guys helping out. What's up, Jay? What's up, Jay Cat? How you doing, Jay? Hold on, guys. All right, everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome to the Niners Sickness Report. How's everybody doing? I hear Watson on the back. Orale, orale. We are listening to Watson. Where's Watson? Hey, Watson, shut up. Sign with the Niners. All right, I talked to Watson. I told him to sign with the Niners, so it's a done deal. (laughs) How's everybody doing, man? What's up, my girl Dina? How you doing, girl? Good to see you. Uh, what's up, Jose Gonzalez? What's up, brother? How you doing? Eduardo, what's going on, brother? Good to see you. Perfect. Can he? I can't hear any background noise. That's what I wanted to hear. Perfect. Awesome. Yeah, I'm using uh, my pod mic. Normally, I use my $400 mic, but I wanted to give this mic a test run. This mic here is about $100 compared to my $400 mic, so I wanted to give it a a test drive to see how it sounds. I appreciate the feedback. What's up, Kathy? How you doing, girl? Good to see you. Uh, Do me a favor, if you guys can... uh, if you guys could uh, share my live, uh, also support my, real quick, quick announcement, if you guys can support my YouTube channel, I'm trying to grow my YouTube channel, if you're not part of my YouTube channel, go to YouTube, uh, type in Niner Sickness, subscribe uh, to my channel, and get the up op- and automatically be entered for an opportunity to win, not one, not two, but three 49er jerseys. Compliment of your boy, Niner Sickness. Um, I'll be definitely be giving out uh, Nick Bosa, a George Kittle, and a Fred Warner. Once I hit 1,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel, I'll be giving away three. Three jerseys. To three lucky winners. That winner could possibly be you. All you got to do is subscribe to my channel. So how's everybody doing? It's Monday. Not the best day of the week. It's the beginning of the week instead of Friday, the end of the week. Everybody loves Friday. Not so much Monday, but hey, here we are. By the grace of God, if you're watching my show, That means you woke up this morning, and we got to be grateful for that. Um, Oh, man. There's so many things going on with our 49ers. Um, The whole Deshaun Watson situation. Do we keep Jimmy G? Do we move up in the draft? Do we go? Do we move down in the draft? So many ways we can go. So many directions we can go. Which direction is John Lynch 
going to take. Does John Lynch really have authority as a GM, or do you guys think that behind the scenes, the person with the authority is not necessarily John Lynch, but is Kyle Shanahan? Do you think Kyle Shanahan allows John Lynch to be the GM, or do you think the power is really held by... I understand that Kyle Shanahan hired John Lynch, but I'm I'm 50-50. All right, Jose says 50-50. Now, I'm curious uh, the reason behind the 50-50. Jose, let me ask you, what have you seen from Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch to make you believe that it's 50-50? I'm curious of uh to hear your uh input about that. Let's see here. It's going to be a three or four team trade to get Watson. Yeah. To be honest, guys, I know a lot of you guys want Watson. Watson's definitely an upgrade from Jimmy Garoppolo. But Everything right now is just speculation of what's happening with Jimmy Garoppolo. Uh, I mean, excuse me, with uh, Deshaun Watson. I believe that we're going to know more towards the middle of March and the beginning of April. Uh, we're going to find out more the, what's going on with the Texans. Are the Texans going to move uh Watson, are they going to stand put and stay with Watson? There's so many factors that are going to take place between now and April in the draft. So everything about Watson is speculation. Honestly, I don't know what's what's going to happen. I want Watson, but until then, I'm not really going to um, I'm not going to worry about it so much. You know what I mean? Uh, not feeling too good. Got. Well, Kathy, I apologize. I'm so sorry that you're not feeling good. Get your rest, girl. Go lay down if you can. Get your rest and prayers towards everybody. Send positive prayers and thoughts uh, towards Kathy Sanchez. She's not feeling well. She's one of our 49er faithful. Um, let's wish her a quick recovery from that headache. Because they both agree to build the defense first when they both join the Niners. Okay, all right. That's a very, actually, that's a very good point that Jose makes because Kyle Shanahan obviously is an offensive mind coach, and they did go defense quite a bit in the draft, also in free agency. So. To Jose Gonzalez's point, very well made. I do agree. They both have that 50-50 call. They both discuss things. I understand that are, that are always come into an agreement with one another. But I really believe they work it out for the best interest of the team. And that's what I like about Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch. There is no... Uh, I'm better than you, or I'm bigger than you, or what I say goes. They are both humble when it comes to listening to each other for the sake of the growth of the 49ers. And that's what you really want in a GM and coach. And I think we have a great uh, team, Jose. Yes, yes, Kathy. Go get some rest. Uh, get some rest, girl. But um, I'm not going to be long. I just wanted to test. What's up, Juan? Welcome, Juan. I just wanted to test the mic, test the background noise. So I just came on here real quick. But I want to ask you guys a question. If D Ford... Okay, let's assume 
We signed Trent Williams, and we signed Jason Verrett, okay? Just for argument's sake, let's assume we signed Trent Williams and we signed Jason Verrett. We have the number 12 pick. We're not getting a quarterback. We're sticking with Jimmy Garoppolo. Which direction do you want the Niners to go? Cornerback? Pass rusher? Or offensive lineman? I'm interested in knowing your point on which direction. Assuming that we signed Trent Williams, we signed Jason Verrett, and we don't go uh, for a quarterback. Corner, S rusher, or offensive line? What is your thoughts? Niner gang all day. Welcome, Juan Manuel Vargas. Welcome, brother. Welcome. All right. So Jose says cornerback. Juan Manuel Vargas agrees cornerback. So if we sign Jason Verrett, you guys want a cornerback to complement Jason Verrett. Now, there are three cornerbacks that I like. There's the kid sustained from, I don't know if I said his name right, from Alabama. There's the kid uh, Farley, uh, Kayla Farley, I believe. And also Horn. There's Horn. Now, which corner do you like of those three? And at 12, let's keep it real. Which corner do you think will be available at 12? And which corner would you take if that's the direction that you think the Niners should go? Dina says pass rusher. Okay. Uh, Dina says pass rusher. Uh, if we don't sign, if D Ford is not healthy, if he retires, if he's not able to go, then we definitely have to go uh, for a pass rusher to complement Nick Bosa, uh, Javon Kinlaw, and Eric Armstead. But I am confident in Eric Armstead. I am confident in Nick Bosa. I am very confident in Javon Kinlaw. I think we need more coverage corners. Uh, so I agree. I think going for cornerback would be more better suited for the 49ers, even if we sign Jason Verrett, especially if we don't. Then we need to go corner with our first and second round picks. But if we sign Jason Verrett, then I expect corner to be a, a, a pick of the 49ers uh, come April. Hopefully the one from Bama. Uh, yeah, um, Sartain, Sartain, I believe is his name. He's a pretty good corner, but let's be realistic, Jose. I don't think he'll be there at 12. I think the 49ers, if they move up, they can get him. I don't think he'll be there at uh, 12. I hope he will, but being realistic, probably not. The, the kid that I probably see falling at 12 that I think is not as good as Alabama kid, but a good enough Joe Horn's son, uh, I think he'll be a good addition to the Niners at the 12th spot. So everyone is writing off most well Eduardo it's not that we're right enough or people are writing him off it's that he's a free agent every everyone in the secondary except Jimmy Ward are free agents they're all free agents I really believe the Niners are going to try to sign re-sign Emmanuel Mosley I don't think they're going to bring back Akilah Witherspoon. I think Akilah Witherspoon most likely will go to the Jets and follow Robert Sala there. But hopefully the 49ers can sign, re-sign 
Emmanuel Mosley and Jason Verrett. But even with Emmanuel Mosley, we need a top flight corner. Because I don't know if we're going to sign uh, Williams back, KY Williams back. He might just be a little bit too much money for us to resign. So that'll be interesting to see. Exactly. You can never have enough cornerbacks, uh, quality cornerbacks in the backfield. I, what I don't want to bring is number, I don't want to bring back Johnson. I don't want to bring back Johnson. Johnson ha, Johnson and Mullins, they both have to get on the same bus and go somewhere far, far, far away. What's up, Louis Beltron? Welcome to the Niner Sickness Report. Good to see you, brother. So, I agree with you guys. I think corner is definitely a way to go. What's up, Sonny? Welcome. Thank you for watching the Niners Sickness Report. I am your boy, Niner Sickness. Uh, definitely. I think corner is the best way to go for our 49ers. I think pass rusher is can be picked up in the third round. Uh, what's up, Shane? Welcome to the Niner Sickness Report. Um, but I might, I don't know. Would you guys be willing to trade down from the 12th spot and then pick up a corner and accumulate more draft picks? Or are you guys comfortable with the 10 draft picks that we already have? Because remember, we got a pick in the fifth round for Emmanuel Sanders. We got a fifth round pick for K1 Alexander. And we got a third round pick for the hiring of a minority coach of Robert Sala. So we have a total of three extra picks. So we have a total of 10 picks going into the 21 draft. Do we draft at number 12, take the best player there? Do we trade down and accumulate more draft picks? Or do we trade up and get that corner from Alabama? Which direction would you want the 49ers to go? Up, down, or stay put? Now, moving up or down is not for a quarterback. It'll be for a corner, for a Q, for a CB cornerback, not a quarterback. Would you guys move up, down, or stay put? I'm interested to knowing what your thoughts are. I think the Niners, if they really like the kid from Alabama, they're going to have to move up to get him. How far up? They're, let's see, they're in the 12th spot. The Cowboys, they need a corner. So I would say they would have to leapfrog over the Cowboys. The Cowboys are sitting at 10, so the Niners would have to move three spots from 12 to 9 to be able to leapfrog the, the Cowboys and take that corner from Alabama. Otherwise, I don't think he passes the Cowboys. But how much are the Niners willing to give to move up from 12 to 9? That's, a, that's really the question. Stay with our 10 picks. I trust our front office to make solid picks. Jose, I agree. Listen, when the 49ers first hired John Lynch, Kyle Shanahan in 2017, and they came into the organization, a lot of people questioned why in the heck they did not draft a quarterback because the Niners did not have a quarterback when they came in, they brought 
They remember they brought in Hoyer as the starting quarterback in 2017. You had Patrick Mahomes and Deshaun Watson. But in defense of the 49ers, Kyle Shanahan was trying to bring in Kirk. Why? I don't know. But I believe he's trying to bring Kirk Cousins in so they were not particularly looking at quarterbacks. Still, you got to do your due diligence to look at every position and how to improve your team regardless. But for whatever reason, the Niners decided to stay away from quarterbacks and look at other positions. And they decided to go with a familiar face to John Lynch, the kid from Stanford, Solomon Thomas. Now we know Solomon Thomas has not worked out for the 49ers, unfortunately. He hasn't worked out. And right now, we are in a situation where we have Jimmy Garoppolo, but do we really have that franchise quarterback? I don't think so. I agree with Eduardo. Eduardo says, do not remind us of Hoyer, please. Yeah, bro. Oh, my God. We had Hoyer. We had Gavert. Bolins and C.J. Beathard. Terrible. But to the point of Jose, John Lynch in 2017 and, and uh, Kyle Shanahan made their mistakes. They both were rookies. Rookie head coach, rookie GM. Coming in, trying to get a field of the organization, trying to get a field of their position, I expected errors first year. They drafted uh, Ruben Foster. They came back into the first round to draft Ruben Foster. Now, you cannot blame them for drafting Ruben Foster. But he was not Good for us. It wasn't a good pick, in other words. He, he Great player out of Alabama, great linebacker, but the kid can just not keep it together off the field. So, Solomon Thomas, Reuben Foster, mistakes. But, moving forward, what's up, Amanda? What's up, Felix? Well, welcome to the show, to the Niner Sickness uh, Report. They, from that point, they started to draft better. They drafted uh, Debo Samuel. They drafted Brandon Ayuk, Javon Kinlaw, um, and many others. George Kittle. So, they have gotten better. So, to Jose's point, he says, Stay with the 10 picks because he trusts the front office. He believes in the process. Jose and many of you, as myself, we believe that John Lynch, Kyle Shanahan is is leading this organization in the right way. Now, I am concerned, though, that because we have so many free agents, that in the start of the 21 season, this 49ers team is going to look completely different from the 2020 team. Will we lose enough players not to be able to compete with the Rams, the Cardinals, and the Seahawks? Or will the Niners replenish players from the draft and this is where it's kind of where you have to hit with your draft picks. You got to make sure you do your due diligence. Your scouts need to be really well and looking at these kids because these kids coming out of college 
can either make or hurt your franchise based on who you draft. We're going to have to wait and see what happened. Now, I'm looking forward to free agency. I'm looking forward to free agency because I want to see what direction Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch is going to go. We need to sign Trent Williams. We need to sign Jason Verrett. We need to sign Juice. And we need to work, restructure, or extend Fred Warner's contract. Yes, Fred Warner is in the same position that George Kittle was two years ago. Don't be surprised that by training camp or OTAs, they extend Fred Warner's contract as they did with George Kittle. Now, the league hasn't confirmed this, but they're going to go maybe about 180 to $185 million to for free agency. Better than 175 If we released D. Ford, if we release Westberg, we will save money that we can utilize for Trent Williams and use, listen guys, a lot of you guys were disappointed when the Niners traded away K1 Alexander. Not everybody, but many of you were disappointed in that trade. I love K1 Alexander, the hot boys, but his contract was just too big. We got a fifth rounder for him. He's off our books. And because of the money that we're saving on K1 Alexander, that is the money we're going to be able to use to re-sign Trent Williams. I am confident in Fred Warner and Dre Greenlaw back there. Uh, Let's see here. Because of those two guys in our front office, off, we have superstars wanting to come play for the Niners. We haven't had that in a long time. Absolutely, Jose. Nobody wanted to play for the 49ers franchise. Let's keep it it 100% real. Prior to Harbaugh, And after Harbaugh, the Niners were a mess. I mean, Jesus Christ. We had um, Chip Kelly, Mike Singletary, Mike Nolan, um, I forgot the name of that defensive line coach that we hired for a year. He was terrible too. Tamsula. Wow. Talk about nobody wanting to come to the 49ers because of that. Then you hire Harbaugh. Harbaugh took us to three NFC Championship games in a row and one Super Bowl appearance. But because of Balak, our old GM, and God, thank God we got rid of him, we fired Harbaugh. Then we went through Tom Sula, we went through Chip Kelly, and everything seemed like we were heading nowhere. And then Jed York woke up and decided to hire a first-time unproven head coach in Kyle Shanahan. He took a gamble in bringing in a GM that has never worked as a GM 
in his life in John Lynch. He brings in two individuals that has no credibility in their positions where they're at now. Yes, Kyle Shanahan is a great offensive mind. John Lynch is a very smart Stanford graduate, but they were John Lynch was never a GM and Kyle Shanahan was never a head coach. First time. And Jed York gave them the keys of the San Francisco 49ers and stepped away. You haven't heard anything in the last few years that pertains to Jed York. He is not butting in. He is allowing John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan to run the organization. That, to me personally, has been the best decision by Jed York. Hire these two guys and get the heck out of the way and allow them to either raise your organization or burn it down to the ground. But you let them do it their way. So far, year three, they took us to the Super Bowl. Now, we didn't win it, but you, need, you guys need to understand one thing. If you don't know this already, when Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch took over the 49ers team, they let, they let go of a bunch of players. They did a complete rehaul of players. Did you know that when we went to the Super Bowl in 2019, the only two players that were in the, in the Super Bowl that were in the Super Bowl in 2012 was the old tight end, Salek, that's retired now, and, um, oh my God, I can't believe I just forgot his name. Oh, you guys didn't get mad. Uh, oh my goodness uh, our left tackle that retired can't think of his name oh he's gonna he's gonna be pissed anyway those were the only two that were on the team in 2019 from the 2012 Super Bowl Staley Joe Staley thank you thank you Jose yes Staley those were the only two players from the roster of the 2012 to the 2019 Super Bowl. John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan completely turned around this organization. And in their third year, they went to the Super Bowl. How long has the how long has the Vikings tried to go to the Super Bowl? How long has the Jets tried to go to the Super Bowl? How long has the Browns tried to go to the Super Bowl? How long has it been since Green Bay tried to been to the Super Bowl? Do you see the pattern here? It is not easy to go to the Super Bowl. It's not easy. But yet, John Lynch, Kyle Shanahan, come into this organization, completely turned this organization around, got rid of all the players except two, brought in their own players, started building from the ground up. Now, keep in mind, and keep this in perspective, when and I'm not trying to take nothing away from John Harbaugh, Jim Harbaugh, excuse me, from Jim Harbaugh. But when Jim Harbaugh came in, he took over a very well team. We had a great team on both sides of the ball when Jim Harbaugh took over. Vernon Davis. We had the best offensive line. We have Frank Gore. 
We had um, we had uh, Aldous Smith. Well, I think they drafted him, but then we had the Cowboy. We had um, Patrick Willis, Navarro Bowman. We had a complete team when John, when Jim Harbaugh took over. But when Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch took over, they took over a team that was depleted in every position that you can think of. They rebuilt that team. And within the third year, they took us to the Super Bowl. Yes, we didn't win. But how long has the Cowboy fans been since without having their team represent in the Super Bowl? How long has the Jets fans, the Brown fans, the Bengals, the Dolphins? You see where I'm going? These fan bases haven't had that luxury to enjoy their team in a Super Bowl. So even though we lost, and it sucks that we lost the Super Bowl, at least every one of us got to enjoy Media Week, right? We got to enjoy a whole week of Media Week leading up to the Super Bowl. We got to enjoy to watch a Super Bowl with the 49ers in it. Unfortunately, the outcome wasn't what we wanted, but still, we got to enjoy a Super Bowl with the 49ers in it. All these other teams that I mentioned have not even sniffed the NFC Championship game, much less a Super Bowl. But we were a depleted team we were terrible. John Lynch comes in. Kyle Shanahan comes in. Turns the organization around and takes us to the Super Bowl. They do something that the Jets, Cowboys, Cardinals, Dolphins, the Bills have not done in ages. So for a lot of you guys that are questioning John Lynch or, or uh, Kyle Shanahan, listen, let's not be too uh, proud it's just because we have a winning organization that because we didn't make it this year to the playoffs, we're a bad team. What's up, Nick? Welcome. What's up, Anna? What's up, Peter? Welcome to the show, to the Niner Sickness Report. I just, I mean, I'm just conversating with you guys. I just want you guys to realize that we are a great organization. We got to see our teams. Now, again, we didn't win. It would have been better if we would have won, of course. But we got to see our, our team in the Super Bowl in 2012. And we got to see the, our team in the Super Bowl in 2019. What would the Jets, Cowboys, Bills, Dolphins, uh, Bengals, Bears, the Detroit Lions, what would their fan base give just to watch their team in a Super Bowl? I guarantee those fan base of those teams would do anything to be able to say, my team. It's in the Super Bowl. Yet, 49er fans, we got to see our team twice in the last eight years. Again, we lost, but we still got to enjoy our team in a Super Bowl twice in the last eight years. Detroit hasn't been to the Super Bowl in how long? Miami hasn't been to the Super Bowl in how long? 
The Browns haven't been to the Super Bowl in how long? Have the Jets been in the Super Bowl lately? Nope. There are organizations that don't go to the Super Bowl. They try to do this, try to do that. They hire a coach. They hire GMs. They hire this. They bring in free agents. And yet, they can't make it to the Super Bowl. But the Niners hire John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan. They bring in players. And then within three years of them being part of the Niners, they take us to the Super Bowl. What's up, Peter? How you doing, sir? Good to see you. Um, my show, the Niners Sickness Report, I usually go on whenever I'm available. There's no precise time. But I do have a show with my other co-host. It's called NWA. Those are on Mondays at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and Fridays Pacific Standard Time at 7 p.m. on YouTube. So go to YouTube, subscribe to the Niner Sickness channel and the NWA channel so that you get to watch all our lives when we go live. So the NWA, Peter, is scheduled Mondays at 7 p.m. and Fridays at 7 p.m. This show here, the Niner Sickness Report, pretty much I go on uh, anytime I'm available or my wife lets me come out and talk to you guys. <laughs> so, uh, but I appreciate you being here, Peter. All right, guys, I have taken enough of your time. It's about 45 minutes in. I just wanted to come on here and test the microphone, test the background noise, but you guys gave me a lot of good feedback. I appreciate you guys for uh, tuning in and watching my show. Thank you for listening to your boy, Niner Sickness. I love talking about the 49ers. I've been watching the 49ers since 1977. I've been rooting for the Niners. 1977. I've seen some ugly years. And I've seen some very good years. I seen I, I know the team and supported the team prior to uh, Bill Walsh and Joe Montana to the Steve Young, Brent Jones, Ronnie Lott, Roger Craig, uh, Guy McIntyre, Jesse Sopolo, uh, Barton, and so many great 49ers that have played for our team. Um, Tim Harris. Um, I'm pretty, I'm, I know that I'm missing a lot of people, but it is nice to know that we belong, that we belong to a great organization. As a San Francisco 49er, Take pride. I know you guys already take pride, but take pride. That we belong to a great organization. Yes, we went to a period of time where we were not, we were wondering what direction were the Niners going, especially with Jed York being so young. Jed York made a lot of mistakes, but I believe he finally has learned from his mistakes. He finally has taken advice from his uncle Eddie. And now Jed York is able to run the organization the right way by hiring two guys and staying the heck out of their way. A lot of owners love to be involved and they put their foot in They do not allow their GMs or their coach to do anything. Jed York is completely out of this. He is completely trusting Jed York. Excuse me, he's completely trusting uh, John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan. 
and it has turned out to be a good thing. So, guys, get excited for 2021. Trust the process. Believe in the process. And know, no matter what, we are faithful. We are the red and gold. We got it tattooed. Okay, we got it tattooed. All right? I got it here. I got it here. And I got it here. Red and gold until we're dead and cold. Remain faithful. Remain solid. And no matter what, the Niners are the greatest organization in the NFL. Bar none. There is no other team better than the 49ers. There's no other fan base better than the San Francisco 49ers. Yes, we get mad. Yes, we get frustrated when things don't go right. But that is because we are faithful. We are loyal to our team. We want to see our team succeed. Continue to trust the process. What's up, Lucky? What's up, John? Welcome, Raymond. Welcome, sir. Scott, welcome to the Niner Sickness Report. You guys have been amazing. Remember, follow me and support your boy. I'm giving away three jerseys. Three jerseys. I'm giving, what's up, Keith? Welcome. I'm giving away a Nick Bosa, Fred Warner, and a George Kittle quality stitch jersey to three lucky winners. Are you going to be that winner? It could be you, but I need you to support my YouTube channel. If you're not following me on YouTube, go to YouTube, type in Niner Sickness. I will pop up. Subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell so that you will be notified when I go live. Once I reach 1,000 subs, I will give away not one, not two, but three quality stitch jerseys to three lucky winners. That could be you. If you have family and friends that are 49er fans, let them know about my YouTube channel because when they subscribe, they get the opportunity to try to win one of those three jerseys as well. So you sign up, you let your friends and family sign up, subscribe to my channel, you and them get the opportunity to win not one, two, or three jerseys. So with that said, I appreciate everybody that showed up today. Thank you for watching my show. I continue to bring you guys the best content that I possibly can. I don't claim to know everything. I'm just a fan that loves the 49ers and loves to talk. I love to talk. So I come on here and I have conversations with you guys. I take phone calls. So if, in my shows, I take phone calls. So if you want to call in, not today, but if you want to call in on my show, send me an email at ninersickness at yahoo.com ninersickness at yahoo.com let me know if you want to come live on my show by video or uh, no, excuse me not video by phone if you want to call in into my show and let me know how you feel about the 49ers I would love to talk to you Send your boy Niner Sickness an email at ninersicknessyahoo.com. Let me know you want to be on. We will communicate, and I will bring you on on my next show. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. I am humbled by each and every one of you. Have a great evening, and I'll talk to you guys on my next show. Peace.